Hey everybody, this is Luke with Stoneco Countertops and I have the pleasure of walking you through today's project that Mitch tackled recently, so let's get right into it. This is an outdoor patio that was just freshly built and the customer wanted something other than a boring looking concrete slab for their picnic area. So in today's video, we're gonna show you the best way to apply any epoxy flake coating. Flake floors are really popular in garages, driveways, and other outside areas, I'm sure you guys have seen them, because you can mix and match a multitude of colors that won't fade and that will stand the test of time in pretty much any weather conditions. So with that said, that's assuming that it was installed correctly. So Mitch is going to show you all the crucial steps in ensuring that this coating won't fail later down the road, starting with how to properly prep concrete for epoxy. The first step being, we need to grind open the concrete floor to allow our first coat to bite and seep deep into the pores so we have a lifelong bond. Basically, it's glue on steroids. So for the parts that are closer to the building, we'll use a hand grinder, and for the field, we rented a walk behind grinder to make easy work of that step. And don't worry, we have a list of all the things you'll need in the description of this video, as well as our website. All right, the project's been prepped, our concrete's been ground open, we swept, we cleaned, we got rid of that extra dust with some isopropyl alcohol on a mop. Now it's time to mix. So we're going to apply our Moisture Seal Epoxy Primer. This is what's gonna glue our flake down to our freshly ground concrete. It acts as a tenacious glue holding those flakes down. We'll let that dry about six or seven hours and then we're gonna scrape the loose flake off. You only need to scrape when you're going full coverage. We have a super sweet custom blend from Kenny Draculas, the custom ranch blend going down. Super pumped about this. And this is my first project in a customer's home going outside. So that's a cool feature of using the flake system. We put the flake down, we come back tomorrow with the polyaspartic, extremely UV stable. So it's good for the outdoor applications. Our Moisture Seal Epoxy Primer has about a 30 minute pot life, 30 minutes sitting in that bucket. But once you get it down on the the deck on the floor, you have a good 45 minutes to get the flake into the material as it starts to thicken up. Midway through mixing, I'll grab a paint stick, scrape the sides and bottom. You always want to start out with a good mix. So I'm just going to pour little ribbons out and then we're going to come real tight to the ground with this. All right, so this job is 720 square feet, so it called for two kits of our Moisture Seal Epoxy Primer and about four boxes of flakes. You'll see later on that we scraped up almost half of what we put down, so we were left with a ton of flakes for the next job, which is perfect. Make sure to check out our coverage chart that we have on our website to figure out how much you'll need for your own floors. We start out by going real tight to the concrete using these floor squeegees. It's real tight, and then we'll come back and back roll using our epoxy glide rollers. They're 18 inches wide, so it makes really quick work of back rolling. We'll go front to back, side to side, and then we're throwing out flake. We're feeding chickens. As you can see, this part is very simple. Spread the material nice and thin across the concrete with the squeegee, then back roll to even everything out. If you've ever talked to someone from a department store, they might have tried to tell you to just acid edge the concrete and skip the grinding before this step. You definitely do not want to do that. Not every time, but in most cases, this coating will peel up if you went that route. So make sure to keep that in mind. There's no cutting corners when doing floors. So do it right the first time and follow these steps. I'm using a pretty good amount of force here. I'm pushing down really hard to get that moisture seal nice and tight. Then we come get any lows and high spots nice and even by using the back roller. All right, it's time to apply the flake. We got our custom ranch blend going on the floor. We're just gonna throw out clumps, let the air and uh, gravity disperse the flakes to a nice even coating. We're looking for a completely dry flake floor. If you flake the floor, you wanna come back and check it 10, 20 minutes. If you start seeing epoxy again, our flake settled, just broadcast a little more flake. We have five different flake color options available, but if you wanna make a special blend like we did today, check out the link I'll put in the description to see what other color options are available. And like Mitch mentioned earlier, we're doing full flake coverage, so apply it heavy. And we'll let this set up overnight, come back tomorrow and scrape off all the extra flakes, bag that up and save it for the next job. All right, we're back, it's the next day. We're ready for the next step. I'm gonna use this floor scraper with very light pressure, nice shallow angle, and scrape off any loose flakes. 
We'll sweep those, bag them for the next project that we're gonna come do here at Kenny Shop. Then it's time to apply the polyaspartic top coat. Let's get to scraping. So these little, uh, our grout lines we left, so I'm not gonna push all those right in there and catch. So when you get up to the grout, just kind of pull your scrapes away and get even more shallow. And then we can pick it on up. All right, I wanna give a big shout out to Mitch for busting his butt doing all these jobs, trying to answer all your guys' questions and show you how to do all of these amazing projects step by step. So if you like what you've been seeing and you've been learning something, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified every time we have a new video. Like I said, Mitch is the man, so give it up for him. Good job, bro. All right, the floor's been scraped. We've blown out all the loose flakes and then we re-prepped any areas that might get the polyaspartic top coat on it. We don't wanna get any polyaspartic up on this metal tin siding. We're gonna mix our material for two to three minutes using a paddle mixer on a drill. Then we're gonna bring in five ounces of grit per one and a half gallon kit. We'll mix again for another minute. We'll pour that material into our paint pans and then we're just applying that material right to the floor with our rollers. We'll roll front to back and side to side and work our way off the project. Once mixed, you have about 50 minutes to get the product applied to the floor and then light foot traffic in 24 to 48 hours. For outdoor applications like this patio, you wanna do two coats of the polyaspartic top coat. I'll come back tomorrow within 18 to 24 hours and apply the second coat, no need to sand. Midway through, you're gonna go ahead and scrape the sides and bottom of your bucket. That's an always a good practice whenever mixing up a two-part epoxy product or a polyaspartic. Our polyaspartic top coat has been formulated for the do-it-yourselfer. There's no nasty smells. There's no reason to wear a respirator. Mix for a few minutes, scrape the sides. We're gonna add in our non-slip, and we're gonna roll this out. saturate the rollers and I'll put my first run and then I feather it out each direction. So we're gonna roll front to back and then I'll switch directions when I have a large area applied and cross hatch and go uh, the other direction. All right, good job everybody. We made it to the final step of our flake flooring system, the polyaspartic top coat. Like Mitch mentioned earlier, since this is an outside application, we went in ahead and did two coats of the polyaspartic top coat. And pro tip, when you're applying it, use a chop brush and kind of squeegee out those grout lines. We don't want any buildup of the poly in that. The product doesn't cure correctly if it's in a large mass. So just make sure to rub that out and make sure it's nice and consistent with the rest of the top. So. Voila, here's the final results of the project. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Uh, the reason why we did this, everybody, was because when you get this quoted out from a contractor, they're typically weeks, if not months, out, and the cost is insane. So this is our DIY version to make it easier for the homeowner to do themselves, hopefully save you guys a lot of money. So thanks for watching, and from all of us here at Stoko Countertops, you got this, and we'll see you on the next video.